Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and on this episode of HeadFi TV, it's obvious we have a very special guest here at HeadFi HQ today, and I think a lot of you know him. This is Dan Clark, founder and CEO of Mr. Speakers, which is what we're talking about today, Mr. Speakers. So what's the big announcement there? Well, the big announcement is that as of right now, Mr. Speakers is Dan Clark Audio and no longer Mr. Speakers. So I can think of a million reasons why this makes sense, uh, but I'm going to ask you anyway for the interview. Why? Why change to Dan Clark Audio for Mr. Speakers? The first and probably one of the most motivating factors is we don't actually make speakers as most people think of loudspeakers. We make headphones. And that brand name was rather limiting because as soon as you got outside the HeadFi community where the name was relatively known, people's first response is kind of, eh? You make headphones, but your name's speakers. And also internationally, the name was sometimes complicated for people in different countries because of the punctuation and the way we had set it up. Yeah. So we really wanted to bring the brand home, make it more directly relevant to the products, and also give ourselves a little more permission to play in new markets as we expand. New markets, which I've pressed him for, but he doesn't want to talk about it yet. Not yet. Not but, yet. <laughs> so uh, why now, though? Well, uh, we're introducing our new Aeon 2 headphones, and that we believe is going to be a very popular headphone, and it seemed like a good time to announce the brand name change would also be coming out with our latest generation of product and what I hope will be our best-selling product of all time. Yeah, you mentioned uh, earlier, which was interesting, that you, know, you are growing actually rather quickly, mm -hmm. and it is harder to do a name change the bigger you get, like this kind of move. So it's also kind of like almost a now or never thing, like this... You don't want to wait till you're even bigger. That's right. And uh, as you make a brand name change, one of the things you have to consider is what is going to be the elements that create a successful brand. And one of them is being relevant to your products. Another is being relevant to your users. And another is giving you permission to play in markets that you are in and want to get into going forward. And so we tried to factor all that stuff together. We picked the name Dan Clark Audio because it had you know, my name personally has some equity in it. People know me in the industry. And it, as a small company with limited resources, it's a lot easier for us to build a brand from a known starting point than from scratch. If we picked some random name like Figtree, the marketing effort to get people to associate that with the brand they already know is much higher than it is to associate it with myself, which is part of the brand they already know. Yeah, again, I think it makes sense and I understand the timing. I'm excited to see what you do down the road with it. But uh, I think for now, what's left is just to say congratulations, man. Thank you very much. Big change after seven years doing this. Yep. Need a lot of new shirts and business cards. <laughs> That's right. So Mr. Speakers is now Dan Clark Audio. Congratulations. The name change from Mr. Speakers to Dan Clark Audio is not the only big news from, well, Dan Clark Audio today. Now, as Dan just mentioned, they're also announcing the new Aeon 2 family of headphones, one open back, one closed back. And these new Aeon 2 models are completely different headphones, not just an update of the original Aeon line. So as I understand it right now, the Aeon family, the one that's currently selling now, is still your best-selling product ever. Correct. It's still selling very well. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why, why change it now? I guess you could say I'm a bit of a restless soul. You and are. I do love improving things. But I also spend a lot of time listening to people's comments and feedback on products. And I don't just listen to what people like. I also pay attention to what people have concerns with. And people loved a lot of things about the Aeon. They liked the weight, the comfort factor. They really generally liked the sound signature. Uh, there was a little more broad acceptance of the closed headphone than there was for the open. Uh, and there was also some concern about portability. And one of the original design goals for the Aeon Closed had been to make a closed portable headphone that really gave a full audiophile experience but was convenient to travel with. And I saw a lot of people say, oh, this is just too big to be a portable headphone. And so we set out to improve Aeon and address those kinds of concerns that came from the community. Let's talk about the compactness, because that's actually a really cool feature. Sure, this is a really neat one. We, we came up with a, a fun idea for how to make a full-size compact headphone. And part of it is that, as everyone knows, our, our nickel titanium headband gives you a very strong and flexible headphone that can do stuff like this without damaging. Uh, and it also allows us to eliminate hinges and other things in here that potentially cause bulk and extra weight. But 
what we did was we realized that since we had this kind of fixed assembly here now with no moving parts in it, that we could take a different approach to creating a compact headphone for travel purposes, and we put the uh, collapsing fold here right in the center of the gimbal. And that allows the headphone to shrink to a very compact size that's small enough to fit in a backpack or a purse in this nice uh, compact travel case. And it's a super lightweight mechanism. In fact, this headphone weighs a little bit less than its uh, original Aeon 1 Brethren, uh, even though it has the extra folding hardware built in. And so now we think we've really dialed this in so you have a truly full-size headphone with no compromises that can deliver a full headphone, full-size headphone experience, but you have portability. Because the ear cup and the ear pad size is actually no smaller than the original Aon. Correct. It's identical in physical size to Aon. But it folds. But it folds. Super compact now. Very and cool. And the case is about two-thirds the volume, if, if that. The new folding mechanism to me is ingenious. I love the fact that it's actually folding and lighter than the previous generation that did not fold. Admittedly, though, for me, that's very secondary. I know for some people that's going to be a very primary, very important thing. For me, that's secondary. Um, the thing that I can't get over is the improvements you got in terms of soundstage and overall sound, but that's mm -hmm. soundstage. So, for example, and this is a key one, for me, the closed is, is more for me because situationally, it just makes more sense for me to have a closed back headphone. And the closed back Aeon 2 is actually more open back sounding than the Aeon 1, if you will, the first generation Aeon open back. Yes. And then, of course, the open back Aeon 2 is more open sounding still, but really, I just can't get over this closed back one and how open sounding it is, and both are more open sounding. So what did you do to the extent that you're willing to talk about it to make that happen? That's a, to me, that's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think the first thing is soundstage isn't something that came naturally to me in headphones. When I first started modding and designing headphones, I was confusing imaging with soundstage. And that was mostly because having grown up with speakers and live music, headphones, perhaps it just is that it takes a, a, a lot of listening for your brain to start processing soundstage accurately and begin to render that as a space. But it was suddenly, it, it was sort of like a light switch hit for me and suddenly I heard it and appreciated it. And once I heard soundstage, I couldn't unhear it. So after that, every headphone we produced, starting with Alpha Prime, focused on kind of progressively expanding soundstage. And uh, we re-engineered everything in the headphone to try and optimize around that, both in terms of creating a more convincing frequency response that sounded a little more like, a um, instead of being in the first or second row, being a little more in the sixth or seventh row. Uh, consider, for example, a male voice. You know, when you're up close to somebody, you have more of a sense of their chest and body than when you're further away. And so by manipulating the frequency response a little bit, you have the ability to push that first row of soundstage a little further out. Then by re-engineering everything about the driver and the motor, uh, we were able to take the far field of the soundstage and move that further out. If you think about it, uh, while the front is defined often by a little bit of, of warmth and how the mid-range is shaped, uh, the back and depth, far depth of field is typically the micro-micro details of reverb, uh, ambient decay, echoes, very small things that are often lost in noise um, or just obliterated if the headphones dynamics and detail retrieval aren't right. And so we rebuilt the motor for starters, using our improved flow technology that we developed for Ether 2. And that allowed us to have uh, a motor that's very tight and eliminates all stray air paths so that the air is going exactly where we want it, when we want it, and avoids any, I'll call it entropy in the signal that can mask those low-level details. So we started off with that motor, then the uh, motor was flipped. Uh, as with e our original Ether headphones, we put the magnets between the diaphragm and your ear. And our testing you know, taught us that that sounded better for that design of motor. But with the Ether 2, we found that the magnets sounded better out here, and that helped expand the sound stage and provide those low-level details that we really needed to get that big depth of field. So for Aon, we did the same process with Aon 2. We tested the motor uh, assembly here and here, and we found that this gave a bigger sound stage and a smoother tone with better detail retrieval and higher resolution.
because uh, the flip thing I didn't know about until like just before we shot this and we were talking about yeah. some of the differences. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, um, in the previous generation, the magnet was between the diaphragm and the ear. Correct. And now you've flipped it and now it's, now there's nothing essentially between the diaphragm and the ear. That's correct. And the magnet's behind it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a single sided magnet structure. Okay. Very cool. And we also changed the tuning materials that we use uh, so that we have tuning materials that have lower insertion loss and allow more detail through while still providing the damping that we need. Um, and we also changed the way we handle energy management within the closed headphones cup so that there's uh, less energy stored in the cup. And that's a, another part of how the uh, soundstage expands. Yeah, and man, did it expand. So, I mean, I can't say that enough. Again, I, I find it just amazing that the closed back version of the new one has more soundstage, a wider soundstage to me than the open back version of the previous gen. And the thing about that is, is I don't really generally place much of a priority on soundstage. I mean, I like to have it. I don't want, I don't want it to be incoherent, but I don't need it to be big. I place more of a priority on tonal balance. But if you can have both, great. You just, you just generally don't get that with a closed back. This is easily, again, one of the most open sounding closed backs I've ever heard. So for me, it's like a bonus. I'll take both if I can have them. You just generally can't. Yeah, and that's, that's probably true for um, a lot of people as they prioritize tone over soundstage. Um, I think one of the things that was really important to us for designing a closed headphone was not only that it be portable, but it, that it, it not sound closed and that it not sound compromised. And, and uh, the other thing is that I wanted it to sound closer to the, to the open Aeon. And we did put a lot of work into ensuring that the voicing on the two headphones is very close. And in fact, if you uh, look at the measurement results, you see the biggest differential is a small band between about 120 and 250 hertz. Uh, where the open headphone has a little more output and that will give it a little bigger and warmer tone for acoustic bass or male vocals. Um, and But that's also part of why this closed headphone sounds so open is it doesn't have any of that kind of uh, cuppy reverb sound that you get from a lot of closed headphones that happens to occur in that region. Right. Yeah, I, that's the other thing that I definitely noticed was the first gen Aeon open back sounded rather different to me than the Aeon closed. Mm -hmm. But with this one, as you're saying, there's no question about it. There is definitely a closer. Yeah, they're siblings. Yeah, they are definitely <laughs> siblings. One is essentially the closed back version of the other, or depending on how you're looking at it. One is the open back version of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyways, uh, very, very, very interesting. And you d you've done a fantastic job with them. Well, thank you. But I can't get over the soundstage more than anything. And the detail retrieval is fantastic as well. Congratulations on that. Thank you very much. So there you have it. Mr. Speakers is now Dan Clark Audio, and the first new headphones under the new Dan Clark Audio company name are successors of, but completely different from, their most successful line to date, the Aeon. Now these new Aeon 2 models are superb, and as we discussed in the interview, more a pair of closed and open siblings than the previous generation. Both models offer vastly improved sound staging and imaging, but also make wonderful improvements to tonal balance and detail retrieval. And they both fold down to this for easy carrying. Anyway, thanks to Dan Clark for visiting HeadFi HQ again. We always enjoy his visits. And thanks to you for watching this episode of HeadFi TV. We'll see you next time and on the forums at headfi.org.